Good evening, everyone. We're going to go into a short word of prayer before Apostle Taylor goes forward with the word on tonight. Our hearts and minds are one accord. Father God, we just come to you on this evening, just giving you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise, Lord. Father God, Lord, as you increase in us, us, we decrease, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for continuing to, Lord, just trust you, Father. Trust your will, your way, Father. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for the spirit of wisdom, Father, on tonight, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the word that's going to be brought forth, Father. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we shall receive, Father, every word that comes out of Apostle Taylor's mouth on tonight, Father. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for just just who you are, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your teaching, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit of wisdom, Father. We thank you, Lord, for just obedient, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. To be obedient, Lord, to you, Father. Being your servant, Father, to draw people closer and near to you, God, Father. And we say glory to your name on tonight, Father. For you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And Lord, we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for traveling grace and mercy coming to and from, Father, on tonight, Father. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to cover our friends and family, Father. Cover us with the blood of Jesus, Father. With your Psalms 91, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Continue to keep us covered, Father. Continue to keep us covered, Father. To continue to keep us, Lord, staying in your face, Father. Meditating on your word daily, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. But, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that we want to do everything, Lord, that is pleasing to you, Father. Father God, we just ask you, Lord, and we just thank you, Lord, for grace, peace, and mercy on today and every day that you allow us to see the land of the living, Father. Yes. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. But, Lord, you are worthy to be praised, Father. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father. Father, we say thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, thank you, Father. But, Lord, we can't do anything without you, Lord. But, Lord, we put you first in everything that we do, Father. We ask you right now, Lord, just continue to keep us humble, Father. Give us the intent to keep us and give us the spirit of humility, Father, to truly wait on you, God, for your purpose and plan that you have for our lives, Father. For we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, again, good evening. Let's get right into a few things tonight. Hopefully I can get past a couple things I want to, um, and Minister Alpha has a, uh, some handouts she'll give you on the prayer watches. I'm going to try to touch on those uh, before the night's out, probably. But I want to go to Luke, the 10th chapter tonight. Luke, the 10th chapter. I want to deal with uh, a familiar story that is, uh, I feel, beneficial to us and something we need to study, especially in this season with so many things transpiring, taking place, and going forward. Uh, again, in this resurrection season, now on our way to Pentecost, when God poured out his spirit upon all those who are ready to receive. It's important that even as we're studying the feast, we're looking at the times of God's invitation, that we don't become distracted from the purposes of God. Knowing that God is intentional in everything he does for us. Even in the death, burial, and resurrection, he went out up so we could get up, okay? We're in that season of rising. Now, I want to go to Luke, the 10th chapter, verse 38. And so we're going to all get involved in this tonight. I want to look at, want to look at some things. So if we can get a read, I want to read from 38 to 42. And then we'll start dissecting. 38 to 42. And then we're going to begin to dissect. Read or read.
shall not be taken away from us. Hallelujah. Now, we want to get into this tonight to dissect this, to look at something. Now, depending on the translation you read, you read a word that was called cumbered. It translates distracted. She was, scripture says, distracted. Something was pulling her attention away so that she was unable to focus on what God said was the most needful thing. See, it's important in this season that we are not cumbered, we are not distracted, that our attention is not taken away from the most important thing. So let's go back to 30. It says, now it came to pass that they went, or one translation said, as they traveled, that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So when you deal with that word travel, it's journey. On this journey, we got to be careful we don't get distracted. There are going to be invitations, but an invitation to something that is not in line with your purpose is a distraction. Now watch this. It says, as they, as, they went, as they traveled, or as they went, a certain woman named Martha received him into our house. How I many you know it's important that we receive Jesus, that we are, we have, we're intentional in our looking for, uh, we got into a son and the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter, or the author and the finisher of our faith. You got to understand something. God didn't give you faith for nothing. He gave you faith to finish something. But watch this. If you get distracted, how can you finish? So understand it. Uh, we love Jeremiah 29. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans of good and evil to bring you to an expected end. Or to give you a future to bring you to an expected end. But how I many you know you got to still understand? You got an adversary that don't want you to make it to the end. You got an adversary that the Bible said comes to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. He has a purpose. And one of the number one ways the enemy is still killed and destroyed is he distracts you. He draws your attention away unto that which is, has nothing to do with your purpose and destiny. So watch this. The Bible says, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet. And look what she was doing, hearing the word. How important is it for all of us in this season to hear the word? You got to hear the word. The Bible says it's the entrance of the word that gives it light and bring it forth understanding. So one of the number one things the enemy is seeking to do right now is to distract you so you can't hear what God said. Now watch this. If you miss what God said, how can you do what he requires? If God gave an instruction to bring forth your miracle, but you didn't hear what God said do, because you were, guess what? You just delayed your blessing. This is not a season that we're looking for delays. We don't have enough delays. But the delays have come because there's been distraction. The enemy has purpose. The enemy has sought to distract. We're going to get a little deeper with this, though. Now, watch this here. 40. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. Now, watch this here. Now, isn't it strange? The Bible said in the very first verse, it was Martha that received him. So, now, you would think if Martha received him, or if Martha was the one that opened the door and allowed him to come in, how in the world did you get distracted? Huh? Martha was the one that, look at verse 30, Martha was the one that received him, but then got distracted. Martha received him, but it's Mary sitting at his feet. Oh, we're going to tear this one up tonight. Huh? Martha received him. See, some of us don't get no farther than opening the door, and we miss it from there. We let him in, but we don't sit long enough to hear what he got to say. We get distracted because we're so busy trying to give God what God didn't ask for. Mm. 
Watch this. But Martha, the one who received him into her house, was busy about much serving. Now, so what this tells us is that Martha had a false sense of what pleased God. Now, the Bible said, be ye doers of the word, but you got to hear the word to know what to do. Martha wanted to go and rattle pots and pan. Martha wanted to pick or fix a meal. Martha wanted it to be said that she served God, but you didn't serve God the way God wanted to be served. Yeah. Now, you're mad. Now, see, see, sometimes we got to be careful that we ain't trying to invite attention upon ourselves. Hmm? Man, you got Jesus in your house. That same Jesus that when the disciples came back and said, well, what did he, you forgot what he said. My need is to do the will of him that sent me. Listen, you got Jesus in your house. You got a man in your house that can speak one word and turn your whole life around and you in the kitchen. And then mad because won't nobody help you serve God the way you want to serve. Look at this story. But Martha was come, but Martha was distracted. So again, that word distracted means to have one's thoughts or attention drawn away. It is the inability to concentrate. It also has the connotation to be confused, agitated, or vexed. Y'all still didn't catch that, did you? She in the presence of God and vexed. She in the presence of God and confused. She in the presence of God and she has no focus. Because the Bible says she was distracted. She was encumbered. In essence, her focus was on everything but the main thing. But Martha was coming about, but served, and came to him, now watch this here, and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Then on top of that, she tried to throw her sister under the bus. <laughs> now watch this here. How are you distracted and going to throw me under the bus? Hmm? How are you distracted? You go to Jesus, but you go to Jesus with a problem that Jesus said, that ain't the problem. You going to drop the dime on somebody and you want Jesus to agree. You want Jesus to agree with your dysfunction. Mm. Well, God, I'm trying to serve you. God said, this ain't how you serve me. Number one, I didn't ask you to do that. Number two, you just dropped a dime through your sister under the bus. You done got mad and vexed because your sister kept tapped into what really pleases me. See, the problem is we keep trying to give God what we want. The scripture said, what does the Lord require me? You got to find out what God wants, because what God wants ain't what you want. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts and my ways are higher. That's the purpose of going to God, to find out what he wants. That's the purpose of prayer, to get in a position, get in a posture. God, what you want? So watch this. Her posture wasn't a posture of seeking God. Her posture was a posture of anxiety. She anxious. She's so busy, she done received him, but she the one with distraction. She received him, but she's so busy trying to give him what she want. She missed what he really want. So her posture, her stance was a posture of anxiety. It was a posture of distraction, confusion. She wasn't looking at her, she looking at what everybody else doing. But she the one missing God. And got God in the midst of her. Whew. 
Huh? How often is it we've got God in the midst of us, but we become so regimented to tradition? Watch this. The traditions of men have made void and not affect the word of God. We've limited God. We've reduced God to a outline. Don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with outline. But when what, what, what God says, I don't want to do that today, then what? God says, I ain't moving like that. Then what? See, the problem is we become so familiar, we no longer sensitive. Sensitivity to the spirit is that if the spirit should decide to flow this way, God, I hear you. This is the way we should be flowing. Hmm? So it is apparent then that any time anybody of any stature came into her house, she felt like the best thing to do was serve them something. Let's fix something. Well, if you knew he was coming, why wasn't it already ready? Now, don't get me wrong, hospitality is a part of the giftings of God. We should be able to show hospitality. But watch this. If his purpose for being there today is not to sit at your table to eat, but if his purpose is there is to deliver you, if his purpose in coming is to heal you, if his purpose in coming is to make sure you understand what is needed and necessary, you got to get out the kitchen. You got to get out from under the thing that you are doing because guess what? It ain't pleasing God. Now watch this. When you pay attention to the story, her vexation was because of her own inability to know what God wanted. You vexed. Now, some things are spirit, but what I'm trying to get to tonight, sometimes we got to deal with what's internal in us that is blocking us when we right there. Man, we right at the brink of the breakthrough. And we focused on everything else but what's needful to cross over this line. To go right on into what God. See, see, the enemy is good at what he do. But watch this. He's so good that when it's done, he didn't do it, you did. Huh? He ain't no way around. You made that decision. Now watch this. Because this is the decision. Martha received him into her house. And went straight to the kitchen. Mary was sitting there, wasn't the one receiving, but had enough sense to say, this is Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> what say is thou, Lord? I'm at your feet. Listen, there's no way I'm going to have this divine echo, this divine voice, this voice that can speak through generations, and I ain't present to listen. See, there's a problem with us even in today. We're distracted because we ain't learning how to practice being in the presence of God. Let's go a little deeper. We ain't satisfied sitting there. The Bible said that we quote it, we quote it, but see, you got to stop quoting it. The revelation, they didn't wait. Well, there ain't no need to wait no more. He just showed up. Now, I should be in tune. See, it, it, it's like the five wise and the five foolish. We both got oil. You wasted yours. Now you want to borrow mine? And you think I'm going to be outside the door with you? Huh? The five wives say, I'm sorry. The store is still open. Go get yours. Huh? You said that's harsh, that's cold. No, that's wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. But in all your kids, you got to get your understanding what? I got enough oil till he comes. And if I split mine with you, me and you both could be sitting out. So we even operate like that. Notice what the verse said. Five wise, five foolish. Both, listen, the number five. You all had the same grace. It's just that you choose to be distracted. See, you knew you were coming to a wedding. And you got distracted. See, sometimes because of our impatience, 
we let internal issues rise up and be a distraction to us. Hmm? We ain't ready. Watch this here. Another word, and even a word that I was studying out that came out even when God was speaking Sunday, is to prepare. That word prepare, and it went back to something I had to set up in a teaching I had done. But that word prepare means to con. How I many you know when you ain't prepared, you con yourself? The Bible said prepare that word without, and then afterwards, build a house. Because make sure you got sufficiency to build. But when you con yourself, See, you knew you had X number of days before his arrival. So why are you wasting your oil and it's already day two? You got a possible five, seven days to wait on. But you just, watch this, you burning the midnight oil. Why are you burning oil when you need to be asleep? Hmm? Why are you up when you ain't supposed to be? Why are you doing this and doing that and knowing it can have a great effect on your destiny? Oh, God. So, again, verse 4, Luke 10, verse 4. And so Martha, but Martha was comforted. She was distracted, the Bible said, about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care? Watch this. That my sister have left me to serve alone? Bid her that she should help her, help me. Make her help me. Huh? Wait a minute. We're at the point of divine release and you won't help. You won't help because you ain't prepared. Huh? See, what distractions do is cause you to not be prepared because they get you out of focus. You, you have the same desire, purpose, goal, plan, but somewhere along the line, two people can have the same goal, desire, plan, but one will get there and the other one won't. Because one gets distracted. Now, what I'm dealing with now, I'm going to deal with it from another side in a minute. I'm talking, in this particular case, this is internal things. This is stuff you ain't dealt with in the process. This is things you ain't put on in check. This is stuff you ain't put on paper. That you know what? My, my attention span ain't what it needs to be. This, 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 my, my, my eyes are wandering. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm too busy. Uh uh. What's the focus? What's the goal? Where are you supposed to be? And sometimes this is because you ain't even wrote it down. The Bible said, write to me. Where do you expect to be? What did you wake up? What did, what, what, what did you wake up expecting to happen? See, because if you ain't planning for something to happen, anything can just distract you. Anything can come from the outside, come from the peripheral, and just there you, you there you go. See, watch, watch this, watch this. The Bible says, be not tossed to and fro with every we in the doctrine? Huh? Why? I got a mission. I got a goal. I got a plan. I got a purpose. So the Bible says she was coming about my service. God, go, go to God. God, make my sister help me. But here's what you want to get to. Verse 41. And Jesus answered and said, Mom, Mom, you know, hold up now. Twice. Anytime somebody call your name twice, you know you're in trouble. Mom, Mom. You done approached me wrong. I got to deal with you. We got a problem for real. But the problem ain't the problem you think it is. See, watch this here. We have to be careful. We looking at everybody else, but God looking at you. You going to God about somebody else, but God going to talk to you about you. Hmm? Now, the thing is, what you going to do when God points you out? Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. He said, hold up. Hold up, wait a minute. Let's put a pin in here. Let me look at you. You distracted, but you presented me with your sister. 
You presented me with an issue that's internal and then an issue that's familial, family, but ain't none of it correct. It's all about you. You distract it. You don't have a goal any longer. You don't have a vision any longer. You don't even know who in front of you. Watch this. But one thing is needful. And guess what? You didn't choose it. Oh, he get deep right there. He said, listen, everything you brought me and told me has nothing to do with your real problem. See, sometimes it ain't other folks that's your problem. Because the enemy sent to do what he do. The question is whether or not I'm going to let him do what he do. Because I better understand it, this is his purpose. Okay? He has a purpose and a plan and a plot and a deception. And that's one of the reasons I'll give him, I'm going to pull this thing we have no time into these prayer wires. That's why when God wakes you up at a certain time to deal with this stuff, this witchcraft, this distraction, these plots and plans of the enemy, you need to get on up and deal with it. Hmm? Because 9 out of 10, whatever they plot, it's for then or soon. But God said, get up and intercede. Get up and pray. Get up and deal with it. He said, for thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary have chosen that good part. Now watch this. And I'm not going to take that away. I'm not. This is what God said. I am not going to take that away. In essence, I'm not going to reverse Mary's choice. She chose correctly. Now watch this. You invited me in, but she made a choice for me. You opened the door. The Bible said in 30, you received me. 38, you received me, but you didn't choose me. Hmm? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You came, church. You showed up. But you didn't hear a word that was said. Because you so busy looking around. You so busy looking at everything and ain't listening to what's being said. Your mind is on this and that. And what does the Bible say? Y'all studied it in somebody in their verse, I think, Auntie did, in Isaiah 26. He'll keep them in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on. But her peace was disturbed. Why? Her mind wasn't on Jesus. You let me. And that's as far as you went. You just opened the door. Okay, come on here. I'm gonna go in. I gotta get this ready for you. Cause see, when it's all over, I, it ain't me talking about you. I want you to go back and tell folks how well I fixed your meal. I want you to go back and talk about the hospitality. So apparently, somebody has said the girl could get down and cook. Okay? So her thing is, I want to show off what they see. But Jesus said, that ain't what's needed. Because when I show up, you need to listen. I'm coming to drop something that's about to change your life. I'm coming to release something that can turn your whole world upside down. But you so busy serving. Watch this, your own reputation. Mm -hmm. You so busy serving your own reputation. You about to miss what I'm saying. And guess what? I'm not going to take that from her. Because she didn't let it so surpass you. Because she heard what you didn't hear. And if she be a doer of the word, and she heard what you didn't hear, and do what you didn't know to do. My God. See, a lot of times you get mad at folks. Okay, you can't get mad at folks these days. Because if people choose to pay attention, don't get mad because you did. 
If people want the word and they get the miracle, don't get mad. If they get the blessing because they sacrificed to hear, don't get mad. Huh? The Bible said when one, when one, uh, uh, it bless you all to rejoice when one more y'all get happy. But find out well, how, what, what, what happened. Oh, that, that's something I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> oh, that, that's something that I didn't even try. I had so much on my mind, them folk, them children. Listen, when the word is going forth, you don't need to be distracted. Hmm? That, if, if there's no other time you clear your mind, you need to clear your mind when the word is going forth. Because you don't know what God did to say. You don't know what God getting ready to do. But do you have it? What the Spirit is saying. Go to Acts 12. Go to Acts 12. Acts 12. So, the, okay, and then you and him forgive what he tells him. The Bible said, be anxious for nothing. She was anxious. She had anxiety that day. How can you manifest anxiety in the midst of you? But she didn't manifest for deliverance. Check that out in the story. She didn't manifest for deliverance. She didn't even recognize her own manifestation. Now you know it's bad if you manifesting satanic and demonic oppression and don't even know it. In the midst of you. Come on, yeah. Acts 12, verse 1. Look what he says. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand, and what did he want to do? Vex certain of the church. See, you got to be careful when people want to vex you. Because anytime people start or spirits manifest to vex you, to get you anxious, to cause your disposition to change, guess what? The purpose is to distract you. You see that? Now about that time here, the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Okay, uh-uh. Why are you messing with my miracle? Huh? Why are you messing with my next level? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta catch this. No, uh-uh. You're not gonna vex me. I'm too close. The vexation is a sign that I must be right at crossing the line. Now what the enemy got to do is get you frustrated. He got to get you caught up in self rather than caught up in God. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. Listen. He got excited. I done vexed him, got this one. Now I'm going and do it again. Watch this. It's bad when the enemy knows what works and you don't. It's bad when the enemy got enrolled and insight into you that you don't have about yourself. Remember, the Bible says, let Satan get an advantage. Jesus has already told you his purpose, plot, plan. We already know how he moves through the works of the flesh. The Bible already told us that the Spirit speaks expressly in these last days. These are things we ain't checking for in other folks. You're checking yourself. Hmm? We went through that with the fruit thing. There are times you just got to stop and check you. Because the enemy doing it. He knows what button to push. Huh? He know what you ain't surrendered to God. He know what you have not turned over to God for deliverance. And now, because that thing or that desire is in you, he taps it. How do you know he done tapped it? Because you frustrated. 
Mm -hmm. I said, here's what Paul said. I've learned therewith to be content. See, you ain't got content. When did Paul say he had content? When he had it and when he didn't have it. Yeah. Hmm? See, she was discontent because there wasn't nobody helping her. Well, there's going to be some time. There ain't going to be nobody there to help you. But you still got to do what you got to do. There's going to be some time there ain't nobody going to recognize you. Work still got to be done. But what the enemy's going to do, he's going to vex you. Well, I can't believe it. I did all this. Ain't nobody calling my name. I ain't gonna do nothing else. I ain't helping nobody else. I ain't doing nothing. You bitch. You frustrated. You're mad. You're in strife. Bible says when there's him in strife, there's confusion in every evil word. You didn't even realize they were just got a hold on you. Now you're vexed. Now you're so vexed. This here, this vexation caused birth. This was un controlled anger. Resentment. See, we got to be careful in this season. The enemy will do whatever he needs to do to knock you out the box. He'll use whomever he needs to use to knock you out the box. That's mean it's imperative in this season as much as lies within us. What does the scripture say? Be at peace with all men. Hmm? Be at peace with all men. Don't let nothing come to disturb your peace. And especially when you could have did something about it. Hmm? Don't, if you're going to be mad, be mad at yourself. But be mad enough to pray. Be mad enough to repent. Be mad enough to go and check yourself with somebody else. But can you tell me what's wrong with me? Yeah, I can tell you, but will you listen? Huh? Because a lot of times, we, we, we good at checking other folks, but we ain't good at being checked. Hmm? We good at getting in the mirror, seeing everybody else, but the Bible said that that perfect law of liberty, you really don't see you. In the true mirror, you see you. But if we be truthful in our humanity, you see you, but you won't deal with you. You see you, and you get like Adam, that woman you gave me. Well, you asked for him. Well, that husband, that man, you asked for him, you made the choice. And then when that don't work, that serpent, that devil. <laughs> well, that's what you all have been fighting all along. But the enemy's so smooth, he would let you see him, you saw each other. That's supervisor I got. I know. <laughs> she been your supervisor how long for the last three years? Ain't that new? If that be the case, she ain't never like you ought to be used to it by now. But it boils down to well, if you have you been praying for her? You threw in all on her, put all on a chair? Did you get an ink pen and slide a little oil on it? <laughs> In the name of Jesus, every time you touch this pen, you will write good things about me. The devil is alive. I find it in Jesus' name. Go out there and put a little oil on the door handle. Every time you get in business card, you're going to bless me. You ain't going to come in here thinking no fool with me. <laughs> See, it's, some, it's just how you handle it. When you know who they are. And you know what their purpose is. And you know that it, it, it's igniting some of you. You got to deal with you. But then you got to pray for them. The Bible said pray for them that despite the you should be. Pray for them. He tells you to them. Be good to them. He calls a fire on their head. But no, you don't got, you talking about them. You, 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 you plotting, you planning, you devising. You don't went back in that old school mode. Let me say one more thing. Okay, but remember now, you still got bills to pay. Huh? Because see, what's going to happen is because you're going against authority, which is, 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 is God's pet peeve. Now, what's going to happen is you ain't going to come out good in the situation. Because hmm? you done touched the office. Ain't got nothing to do with the person, but you touched the office. 
Like you in the unemployment line. <laughs> and they still up there doing what they've been doing for the last three years. And sometimes people are just the way they are because God used them to put an edge on you. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes God used wicked kings and wicked leaders to make you a better person. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand how the enemy works, but you got to also see what's going on in you so that God don't have to tell you, I ain't changing that. She pointed the finger at Mary and God pointed it right back at her. And you were the one who let me in. But today's deliverance is really about you. Because you got stuff you ain't dealt with. So we got to be mindful that we don't let distractions get us off course for our greater good and our greater purpose. And our number one, let's, let's see if I can get to some of this tonight. You all got the handouts on the watch. But our greater purpose as people of God is to pray. It's to have a prayer life. We supposed to pray about everything. Huh? We supposed to go into prayer about it. Okay, go to listen. It will be done. Go to listen. Because we're dealing with anxiety, we're dealing with disappointment, we're dealing with, with frustrations, we're dealing with all of this stuff, and God done told us how to handle it. And so the antidote is in Philippians 4, and we all know this. The Bible says rejoice, and again I say what? Rejoice. You got to listen. You got to let the joy of the Lord be your strength. You got to understand that you got an adversary, and watch this. He ain't distracted. You ever thought about it like that? The enemy ain't distracted. When he come at you, he come at you. Sometimes, like we talk about that verse, and I think the problem mentioned it Sunday or whenever it was when we talk about when the enemy comes in. We always say when the enemy come in like a flood. Now when the enemy come in, it says like a flood, God lifted up a stand. You know it's the enemy. And that's one of the worst things they give me right now. Paul, I need to talk to you. I said, okay, what about it? See, the enemy, okay, so you know who it is? <coughs> well, our conversation is real short. It's going to be shorter for me at this point. Because you just told me the problem. But you ain't listening. And I know it was the enemy that said, okay, hold it. Hold it. If there are two major voices in the land, and you know one and don't know the other. See, you ain't listening to what you're telling me, but I'm listening. You said it was the enemy. You said it was the devil. You said it was a spirit. Okay. How do you have that much information and you still lost? How do you have that much information that you know who it was that said it but you don't know what to do next. It was an enemy. Even when the Bible talks about the good, the, 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 the wheat and the tap, he said it was an enemy that sold it. So watch this here. You just told me his voice, you know, but you don't know God's voice. And I know it was nobody but the devil. Oh, well, if you know it wasn't nobody but the devil, and if you have an understanding that the devil is the father of lies, then whatever he told you first and foremost has to be a lie. But now I'm vexed because I'm listening to a voice that I ain't even supposed to listen to. And what, let's go further. I'm even acting on this voice that I know is not God. And I'm wondering why my results aren't different. Because you listen to a lie. You listen to deception and manipulation. You went off the instruction of a voice that was not God. So be mindful when people come to you. Child, I know the devil is. Okay, well, if you know the devil is. You know this. Truth is, they really don't. But this is where education needs to come in. So how can you hear and know it's the devil but don't know God. 
Now, we need to really get out of religion right now. Because you telling me all this about God, but sister, brother, you don't understand God. Because you don't know his voice. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they don't follow. So you might recognize him, but you ain't following him because you know it's him. Make sense? You know it's him. But if I ask you what Jesus said, I don't know, I, I, I'm struggling to hear the voice of God. But you can hear the devil. Hmm? You can hear sin. I know it was wrong. But if you, he didn't know if it was good and do it or not. So you knew it was sin. So what are you telling me if I chose that? Come on. The Bible says, look what it says again. Let's see if I can finish this up. Verse 6, Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything. In everything. By prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God. See, watch this. If we would practice talking to God more than we are listening to that devil, we can get on course. And God always understands something. God won't deal with you before you deal with anything else. Sometimes you just got to go and park yourself in the presence of God and say, God, I need an old wall. God, I need you. When the song 139, search me, oh God. And whatever ain't right, get it out. There's some stuff that ain't right. It's some stuff that needs to be dealt with. It's some stuff that the enemy is using to vex me, to frustrate me. I don't want to be that close in your presence that I become Martha. Hmm? I don't want to have enough sense to let you in, but not enough sense to listen to you. Oh, God. Huh? So be careful from that. But everything by prayer is okay. And then notice what verse 7 says. If we would just learn to pray, peace could be still. If we just learn to have a prayer life, if we would just learn to talk to God about what's happening before we fly off the handle, before we make statements we can't retract, before we do things that we can't undo. He says that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart and your mind. Watch this through the anointing. Huh? See, here's the problem, y'all. Here's the problem. The problem is when we got an anointing for everybody else, we got an anointing for ourselves. The problem is when we praying and you got a word on everybody else. But what about you? Hmm? It's just like the mirror. How did I look in the mirror and see Elder Brown? The mirror reflection wasn't Elder Brown. The mirror reflection was me. So why did I comb my own hair? Mm -hmm. So I'm so busy by his hair out of place, but the issue is I didn't see his, I saw mine. But unafraid, I was afraid to deal with what I saw. So afraid, I wouldn't even take it to God. I did what they did in Jesus. I shifted the blame. God, it was him. God, it was them. God said, no, it's you. You need me. You need to deal with some stuff on the inside of you. Sometimes you gotta ask yourself, why I keep attracting this? What is the magnet that's in me that's pulling this in? Sometimes you gotta get in the presence of God and say, God, demagnetize me. Because this stuff coming, ain't this ain't you. Hmm? Cut this drawing off. The Bible said, draw nigh to God, but see, why did him? This ain't God. How do I know it ain't God? Because it's vexing me. How do I know it ain't God? It's frustrating me. How do I know it's, it ain't, ain't it, that it ain't God? I don't have peace. So let's get an understanding, pay attention to what is the enemy is using so we don't be distracted, so we don't miss God. 
so we don't miss his word because I'm in the presence of God because I need to hear word. 